think this is one of the quietest crowds that we've had in a long time here. <laughs> Emerald Lagasse here. Welcome to Emerald Live. Hey, one of the great things about living in New Orleans is uh, the Mississippi and the Gulf. You know, the river into the ocean, the ocean into the river. A lot of good eating comes from uh, that kind of combination where, you know, some fish like to... Uh, to live in the ocean but spawn in the river and some like to live in the river and spawn in the ocean so we're gonna kinda do my little version tonight of some uh, some river fish is what we're gonna do tonight and uh, I'm talking about starting with a salad you will think this is an ungodly combination but we're gonna show you uh, a smoked sturgeon salad with some eel smoked eel Oh, it's uh, unbelievable. And some shoe pick caviar, and I'll tell you what that is in a little bit later on down in the show. Shoe pick caviar is the word of the night. Shoe pick caviar. <laughs> and a uh, fish dish that uh, really a whole season is devoted to. You, you've uh, ever had shad roe? Yes? You guys are in the right studio, right? <laughs> We're going to do some shad roe tonight with a tomato and anchovy sauce that's going to be absolutely great. And then there's nothing like rainbow trout right out of the, uh, out of the river. Oh, that got your attention. Oh, leave it for the little rainbow trout. That got your attention. How about salmon? Oh, okay. How about Doc Gibbs and the Emerald Lab, man? I'm going to show you a wonderful, wonderful sort of a spring dish of mud bugs, which is crawfish, and fiddlehead ferns and morel mushrooms over salmon. Really, really, really delicious. So stick around. It's getting a little fishy here on Emerald Live. <laughs> I was coming around. How you doing, guys? Coming around the corner, and Doc said, mud bugs? <laughs> Crawfish. That's just another name for them. Not only the signs of uh, spring, but uh, river fish, fiddlehead ferns, spring. You ever had them? Sometimes I... No, I'm just <laughs> not going there. Ramps, little wild leeks called ramps, another side of spring, beautiful brook trout. So uh, I'm going to get started on a very sort of unusual, unusual salad. This is smoked sturgeon. Now, the sturgeons from the Caspian Sea right now are very endangered. This is domestic, farm-raised. And then they smoke it, different types of woods. Mesquite would be too strong. This has been smoked with hickory wood, which is one of the fa my favorite ones to, to do a lot of smoking with. Strong, but not too strong. And they took the loin or the filet, if you will, of the sturgeon. They actually smoked it till it was just about fully cooked and yet smoked. So that's one component. The other component of this salad is going to be the dressing. I'm going to show you just a quick, easy, simple way to make a buttermilk fast buttermilk dressing or ranch some of you may call it ranch i don't know where they came up with this name ranch <laughs> like is there a cowboy in the bottle or you know i don't know doc you know ranch ranch oh and i'm not gonna go there right just these salad dressing police out there i don't know anyhow and then eel i love eel as soon as you say eel people go Instead of eel, they go, ooh. But this particular eel has also been smoked. Okay? Pretty big eel. You ever had eel? No. You are going to have a treat tonight. Tonight, 
is your lucky night. Okay. <laughs> what I'm going to do, show you this. I've got some flour, and I'm going to add some essence in that flour because it's kind of lonely. Just sort of mix the essence up in the flour. <laughs> going to take the eel, and I'm going to cut it right down the middle like such. And then I'm going to cut these little nuggets. See that? Doc, have you ever had eel? Oh, yeah, plenty of times. It's good, smothered <laughs> in garlic with tomato. But not this time. What we're going to do is we're going to take this eel now, dredge it in the flour like this. You see? Then I have vegetable oil heating at about 360 degrees. <laughs> so I know you're saying to yourself, what is he doing? <laughs> He's going to fry some already smoked eel? Yeah. Get your own show if you don't like it. <laughs> That's what we're doing. I don't go tell you what you should cook. So we're going to fry this as a little garnish, folks. I know, it sounds disgusting. Just wait till you taste it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so what was I thinking about when I came up with this fried eel thing, you're probably thinking. I don't, you know, I don't know. Thinking about good. I got a new sink. <laughs> Compliments of the Sopranos. <laughs> All right, now, fried eel is going. Let's, while it's frying up, let's make a quick dressing. We're going to emulsify this. What does that mean? It's not going to be a vinaigrette. It's going to be more like a mayonnaise, emulsified. What does that? By adding an egg. I'm going to add a little dill. You add too much dill. Oh, look at that fried eel, huh? <laughs> going to love it. Now, slowly when you're emulsifying a dressing, you got to add oil to it, but you got to do it slow. See how I'm just sort of drizzling this in here? If you add it too fast, it's going to break. Then it's like you got a vinaigrette. Then you look bad. So you got to do it slow. This is uh, drizzling music by Doc Gibbs. So. What we're going to do is starting to come together now. We're going to take this. Oh, look at that. Ooh. It's like eel jerky. <laughs> it's what it reminded me of just then. It's my mind, I'm sorry. It's, I'm thinking eel jerky. Package them up. Bring them home on the subway. They'll really look at you funny then. All right, now this is emulsifying really good, which means it's getting thick. Slowly adding in the oil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beautiful. See what I mean? Watch. See how it's thick? It's emulsified. Now what we're going to do is we're going to season this. A little salt. Pepper. Now... We're going to add some acidity to it, the juice of a half a lemon. And then we're going to slowly, slowly add, which is going to give it the richness, some buttermilk, about a quarter of a cup. So we've got a great buttermilk dressing. We've got some fried eel, or eel jerky, if you will. Some smoke sturgeon when we come back. Another night! Stick around! Back in.
Gibbs and the Emerald Live Band. Welcome back, everybody. Oh, man. We're like river fishing right now. Kind of. Crispy fried smoked eel. The other way that you could look at it is that it's like a nice, like it's like a fish crouton. Look at it that way. If, then I have the sturgeon that I just take a fork and flake the meat. Be careful with the bones, of course. Now, here's what we do. We take the smoked sturgeon, and we're going to toss it with a little champagne vinegar. And then I've got this butterhead lettuce. I'm on this butterhead lettuce kick right now. They're cute. You know, they got little roots, you know. They like the, it's like a little house they got them in. You know? It's like a one-bedroom apartment. A little house. So, we've cleaned some of the bed, bib lettuce and we've washed it. I love bib lettuce. And what we're going to do is, I make like just, I, I take the bib lettuce and I just kind of make like a little flower like this. See? Like a little flower. Then, some very thin sliced red onions. I just kind of, as much as you like. Some fresh chive. I'm going for the more onion effect. Why not? It's a beautiful day. Okay. Little bit of champagne vinegar. Or... You could use other, like apple vinegar would be okay. Not too much. You don't want to get too, too vinegary. Then, I take a little bit of the dressing that we made. And what I do is I drizzle a little of that on the sturgeon. As much as you like. I don't like it too wet. Take a little of the dressing and... <laughs> See, now it's happy. It wasn't happy earlier. It's happy now. It's going to be really happy. You, so you've got to season it. See, I don't know where you get your bib lettuce or butterhead lettuce. Where I get mine, it don't come seasoned. It comes in a house, <laughs> but it doesn't come seasoned. A little pepper, as much as you like. Now, we toss the sturgeon. Doesn't that look good? simple. Your guests come, here we go, we take the sturgeon and red onion salad. You see, we put a little of that on the lettuce, just like that. Then I take the fried eel. Three, four, whatever you like. And then, this here happens to be a caveat called shoe pick. And I'll explain that in a second. I, I've been using this stuff for about 20 years when it was unknown. See, there are five caviar roe producing fishes in North America. Not to get too technical, but right now I'm going to get a little technical. <laughs> sturgeon would be one. Humpback sturgeon would be two. Yummy, yummy. Paddlefish is number three. It's, paddlefish is illegal in a lot of states, including Louisiana. Then there is shoe pick, kind of looks like a sturgeon, you know, like prehistoric thing. And then garfish. You ever hear of garfish? Go down south, jump in the river for a couple of minutes, you'll see one, I'm sure. Garfish. The only problem is, is garfish is toxin, so you can't make caviar from that. True caviar roe producing fishes. Shoe pick. And uh, they're down there in Mississippi and Louisiana, and they're about a third of the price of expensive caviar and really delicious. So I use a little bit of shoe pick caviar right like that for a little garnish and there you have it. That's how simple it is, folks. Okay, a little a little salad. Don't forget your neighbors. I told you you're a lucky night. All right. Oh, thank you. One of the other tales of spring going into summer is shad roe. 
But because of Shad having so many bones, you really like can't go to a restaurant like, well, I'll have the Shad. Doesn't, haven't seen it happen yet. But you can go in a restaurant and get Shad Row. Like now, spring, summer. And basically it's the row from the Shad during this type of season. So you with me on that? How many people have eaten Shad Row? I, I, maybe a, what, a quarter of the people here? Did you know what you were eating when you ordered it? <laughs> yeah. It's like, the, it's like the foie gras of fish, basically. All right. Delicious little sauce for Shad Row that I discovered is a little onion, some salt, some pepper. Love that. Then let that cook for about four or five minutes. Once we get the flavor going from the onion, then we're going to add some chopped garlic. Oh, yeah, babe. Some chopped anchovy, a couple of anchovy fillets. Oh, yeah, babe. <laughs> Sometimes I'm having a rough day. I just take an anchovy filet, put one whole clove of garlic in it, roll it up, just pop them like candy. Oh, yeah, babe. It will clearly keep everybody away from you on the subway. <laughs> now, you don't want to burn the garlic, so I've got about four or five of them Roma tomatoes just chopped up. This is going to be a very quick sauce. Look, if you don't want to do this with shad, shad roe, you can do this with pasta. It's fantastic. Over chicken. Capers. Not everybody likes capers. So I'm not going for the full, you know, full caper deal. I'm just I'm like kind of on a minimum, medium caper deal right now. Crushed red pepper. And if you want to kick it up more, you know, look, you just crush red pepper. You can see how simple this is. Now, we're going to add a little bit of white wine to this. And we're going to let that start cooking down. Here's the shad, as in shad row. And these are four, per you can buy this at the fishmonger. These are four perfect lobes, is what they're called. But you're probably saying, what do you mean four? There's just two there. And that's just because you don't want to go breaking this up. See, there's a little connecting thing there. Canoculator valve or something. <laughs> Kniflin pin, call it what you want. <laughs> Membrane is what it's called, but I thought it would be nice. I like Kniflin pin better. <laughs> so you want to cut that Kniflin pin, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take that and we're going to dredge it, season it with some essence, and then what we're going to do while we're waiting on our sauce I'm going to add some olive oil to this pan here, and I'm going to start sauteing both sides of these lobes. But you've got to work with it very gingerly because you don't want to break up the row. You with me so far? There's a quiz at the end of this. Are you sure? <laughs> when we come back, I'm going to show you what it looks like, and then another notch! Stock <laughs> it! Welcome back. Doc Gibbs, Cliff, Charles, and Teddy on drums. So 
So I've got the first, we're kind of joking about the foie gras of fish, but it's basically what it is. Again, also what you want to be uh, careful, you don't want to break this up. See, and I just dredged it in some flour like that, folks, okay? And um, the sauce is reducing out. And then I'm simply, what I'm going to do now, we're going to turn this. So people freak out about turning things in a skillet like this. We're just going to lightly get underneath it, flip it over like such. Flip it over like such. Now, we'll take our other guy here. Dust it seasoned flour. And then we'll just sort of get this one going in here. Now, don't call 911. See, like, people uh, freak out. They're looking at this. Huh? Oh, all the oil's gone. <laughs> it's okay. Relax. Just add a little bit more oil. See? All right, let me show you how I'm going to finish this. How I'm going to finish this is... See our sauce right now? The white wine is reduced out. If you don't want to uh, add butter, don't. You could add a little olive oil. Olive oil, all right? Okay, that's where you get the extra virgin stuff out. We're just gonna drizzle a little bit of extra virgin olive oil in there. I just use a fork and I just whisk that right in there. Finish with a little bit of parsley. <laughs> now, how I finish it, very simple. I'm going to take a little bit of arugula. Again, some good olive oil. Just, just a few drizzles. A little bit of salt. <laughs> some pepper. Well, arugula is kind of peppery, so you just don't want to... Then just lightly toss this. Maybe a little bit of lemon juice. Yeah, maybe we'll add a little lemon juice in here too. Why not? Hey. When in doubt, add a lemon. <laughs> All right. Here's what I like to do to finish it up. We'll turn this guy over now. <laughs> Oh, look at that, huh? Okay, those two are ready. Here's what I would do when I'm ready to uh, get this going. I just take that wonderful, lightly arugula salad like this. Then I take the shad row. The old shad row. We're still cooking that one. And then, just take this caper anchovy white wine and just sort of do that sort of deal. Works for me. And there you have it, all right? A little shad row. Look at that, ladies, huh? Got a lot of friends. Got a lot of friends. One of my great uh, other things that I love to do, bring your little ice chest, you know, if you go to the camp or camping or whatever, and you go fishing, particularly if you can get trout, some brook trout. I just bring it. What I do is I take a couple of water containers, I fill them up about three-quarters of the way, night before, put them in the freezer. Then I put them in the bottom of my ice chest. Then I take all these different vegetables that you want, summer vegetables, and you can put them right inside the ice chest, you see? Then the great thing is, that evening when it comes time to cook, not only is your vegetables all, if you catch fish, that is, <laughs> not only is your vegetables nice and cold and ready to do whatever you're gonna do, but also now you got cold water to drink. 
So, what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to got tomato. I've got some escarole here. Could use whatever radicchio. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically, I've got some baby artichokes. And what I'm going to do, yeah, see these little guys here? Oh, they're cute, aren't they? <laughs> so what we'll do is we cut these in half. See? So you can just take them out of the ice chest, cut them in half. Of course, you can bring a little olive oil with you. I got some shallots. You could use onion. What I do is just take the olive oil and drizzle it, brush it, whatever, like this. Season it with a little salt, pepper. And then I'm going to start grilling these and get ready to show you what we're going to do with them with these beautiful brook trout, okay? Brook trout grilled vegetables. I'm going to put them on the grill right now. When we come back, I'll show you what we're going to do with them. Stick around. Back in. in the Emerald Live Band. So I can see some of the faces in the studio audience saying, oh my God, he has really flipped his lid. Because <laughs> I put some escarole or whatever kind of lettuce. You see, I started grilling, first of all, my artichokes, which are going to take longer, then the tomatoes and the shallots. Then I put this sort of these, you can put, use endive, it's summery. It's, you know. Now, show you how quick we're going to cook this, these trout. Take just some seasoned flour. Take the trout. Season them up. And I just dredge them in the flour like this. See? Oh, yeah, babe. <laughs> Very simple. We're going to season them up. And what I do is just shake the excess flour right in the pan. I love when you talk like that. <laughs> Getting my attention. Now I'm dredging. And then we're going to just sort of get and put the trout fillet just like that in the old. Now, while that's cooking, it ain't going to take that long. What you do is you get a little platter and then I'll just take one of those warm heads of the escarole, see? Little heads of the escarole and I got my shallots that I had there, those little onions. You could use Cipollini onions as well. Then Everything okay back there, ladies? And then what? We'll just take the artichokes now. You see? Take these little baby artichokes. I love. They're sort of like... You know, the Italians do these artichokes where they fry them crispy. These are just grilled nice and crispy. Then the tomato that have just been, you don't want to cook them till they smithereens here. You just, oh, we lost one. We got a hostage. See? Doesn't that look great? Then, oh, wait. Now what we'll do. We'll go over here and flip the old trout. <laughs> See, crispy like that? Oh, yeah, babe. Now, again, if you 
need more olive oil, go ahead. Generally, when that happens on that side is when I come back and season it, a little essence, you know, keep a little in your pocket. Now, here's what we're going to do to finish this up. We're going to take just one lemon, again, from that ice chest, right? And we're just going to squirt a little bit of that lemon juice like that on our vegetables. Then, you got to be careful with him, folks. He just got off the endangered species list. Now, extra virgin olive oil. Jay, what are you doing back there to those people? Now take a little extra virgin olive oil and we're going to drizzle it like that on our vegetables and the artichokes. Okay? A little more pepper. A little more pepper for me. All right. Ring the campfire bell because we're there. Thank you, Doc. Now I just take the trout. I just take the trout and just kind of do one of those little numbers like that. You see? Talk about a simple summer meal right there, huh? There you have it, some brook trout, grilled vegetables. You want to kick it up one more notch. Sometimes I say to myself, self! This is a really, really aged balsamic vinegar. Oh yeah, those Italian people are serious about their balsamic. But if you want to kick it up a couple of notches, what I like to do is just, you can put a splash of that on the trout. Oh, come on. <laughs> Little parsley, bam, there you have it like that. This next dish, I had to bring some water, as you can see, to a boil because I want to do a technique that's called blanching. And what I want to do is add it a little salt like that. What I want to blanch first is I've got some ramps. These are little wild leeks that grow along the, the streams during the spring going into the summer. A beautiful onion flavor. And these guys right here, also, they're called fiddlehead ferns. Okay? Now... If you don't get them fresh, first of all, if they're not green, if they've got any kind of slime at all, psh, forget it. No, because they will. They, gotta, they smell like peanuts almost. But we've got to blanch these. So that's what I'm doing right here. I want to get them blanched a little bit. Then I'm going to shock them in some cold water in a second here. I don't want to cook them. I just want to blanch them. I wanna, the salt's going to help bring out the color a little bit. So about maybe two or three minutes. And I'm going to do the same thing with the, the, with the ramps. But the ramps, the thing with the ramps is, look, that's how fast it needs to blanch them. See, that's why I save them for last. And one, what we're going to do, take another spring ingredient that I absolutely love, a morel mushrooms. Morel mushrooms, right? That's a true wild mushroom, not a cultivated mushroom. See, like shiitake, oyster mushrooms, those are cultivated. You can do, grow those in the backyard. But morels, they have a special season. And we cleaned them up and halved them. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start sautéing them in some olive oil, and I'm going to add a little shallot. When we come back, I'm going to show you this incredible ragu with salmon to die for. Stick around. <laughs>
Doc Gibbs and the Emerald Live Band. All right, you can see that I sauteed the morels in the olive oil. Now I'm going to add my salt, some shallots. You could use onion, some pepper. In the other skillet, I've rendered down some pancetta, Italian bacon. See that? Getting all, just sucking all the love out of it right now. Getting it a little crispy. I'm going to show you what we're going to do with that as well. Now, once I add the shallot to my morels, now I'm going to do like what I call a spring love fest. I'm going to add the fiddlehead ferns, and I'm going to add some Louisiana crawfish tails that I'm going to season. Oh, yeah, babe. See that? Not only am I going to do that, but I'm also going to add just a little bit of stock to this broth. Chicken if you got it, meat juices, whatever you got. Water. Just if you use water, make sure you season it. And we're going to cook this down. Now, one of the things that we're going to do, I got to season this some more. It's just not there. Oh, eat. Oh, oh, it's happy now. It's happy. Now, what I'm going to do once the bacon gets crisp is I'm going to add some shallot to that, let that cook a little bit. Then basically what I do, folks, is just turn the heat off. The bacon's almost done, but not quite done. Then you get these ramps, and you tasted them. Like you said, oniony, right? Mm -hmm. and I'm going to squeeze the water out of the ramps. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring these, see, and a little bit of the water in there with the bacon juice and is going to just, oh, makes him so happy. Just give him a little salt. <laughs> now, now what I'm going to do is this. Salmon. Skin on. Nice, nice. Take some olive oil. And then we're going to, you know, if you buy salmon like this, take it home and then cut the size steaks that you want. See that? Last week, we did a little comparison. It was $1.50 less a pound if you just take, go home and cut your, cut your salmon. Don't tell them I told you. <laughs> so we're going to get some salmon steaks. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start seasoning this. And then I'm going to start skilling it. The great thing about salmon, it's also got a built-in sort of like shrimp. They've got a built-in thermometer. You can just start them skin side down. Well, when we come back, I'm going to show you what it's like to put all of it together. Stick around. Doc Dibbs. Band. Look at this. See, this is what I was telling you about. Salmon has that built-in thermometer. You see, you can see that it's cooked right now about medium rare, which is about three minutes on medium high skillet. Can you see that, folks? That's a great thing about salmon. Now it's time to bring it on home. And what do I mean by that? Well, it's time. <laughs> Some mashed potatoes I made. Just basic mashed potatoes. And here's what I like to, uh, this is a great family dinner. This is what I like to do, folks. I like to take the mashed potatoes. Oh, but wait, 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 wait. <laughs> then I take those wonderful leeks, those ramps, you see? And I just kind of put a few of them around, okay? Crispy bacon, right? So we got that. 
Then we take the beautiful salmon, okay? Take the beautiful salmon fillets. We'll just put a few of them like such. All right? Playing with your emotions, huh? See, you get the salmon fillets like that, okay? Then, that wonderful spring, that wonderful spring ragu of the morels, fiddleheads, crawfish, just kind of right over, right over the deal like that, you see? Are you with me there? There you have it. 